All right, cadets, Dr. Cook here again with another video. This is going to be a midterm review uh, to help you get ready for WPR3 and all the uh, key points. All right, when you do your overlays, all right, make sure that every overlay has the same basic requirements that have to go around on it written in black. All right, you got to have unclassified on it in three places, top, bottom, and in the info block, on the bottom of the info block, all right, that goes along with that. So three places you write the word unclassified. All right, you need your two grid reference uh, crosshairs, all right, that's somewhere that's out of the way on the map with uh, the numbers, north seeking arrow. All right, and then that info block, you got to have um, a title or name, okay? And that needs to say something about what this overlay is, all right, different from the other, other overlays. All right, you should reference what map you're on. Right, you got to have the name of the person who made the overlay. That's you if you're the one making it. All right. And then a date time group of when you made it. So we know uh, when it was made and which one might be newer if we run into two of them. All right. The area of operations overlay specifically. All right. That whole thing is in black. All right. You should be showing things like unit boundaries, the objectives, the assembly areas, the routes, the phase lines, any other graphic control measures go on the AO overlay. All right, not on other overlays, only on that one. All right, you also got to have all that basic overlay info and that title on this one needs to say AO overlay. All right, and then the rest of the info block information. All right, your GTAO, all right, is the one that talks about your terrain. Okay, that means you got to have your terrain mobility in green. All right, your restricted and your severely restricted areas. All right, which should make some kind of sense. All right, and don't miss huge things like you left the cliff and didn't mark that as anything. All right, um, you should have friendly avenues of approach marked in blue. All right, have it have at least a primary and an alternate. All right, you should have your enemy avenues of approach marked in red. And I understand we're usually doing defenses, so approach is kind of an odd word to use. All right, so it could be the way that they're going to exfil out of it or a way that they could go from their objective to interdict you or an avenue of approach for a reserve force to come in. All right, key terrain needs to be in purple or black with the right symbol, okay? And it needs to be on key terrain, okay? You can't just throw those things around anywhere and it shouldn't just be the hilltop, all right? All the basic overlay info needs to be there, all right? And the title on this one needs to say that it's the GTAO, all right, in the title. All right, so we know what overlay we're looking at. All right, this does not include anything else. All right, we don't put unit icons on here. We don't put boundaries. We don't put objectives. All right, those are things that go on the other overlays. All right, the enemy situation template overlay is what shows the information about your enemy. All right, key point that a lot of people are missing up, it needs to be your enemy. All right, you're a platoon leader. What enemy are you fighting? Okay, don't go showing enemy information in other platoons AOs just because they're part of your company or the company commander gave it to you. All right, I also saw a lot of people that um, took the company commander's enemy sit temp and just kind of copied things off of it and didn't understand what they were copying because some of them were just call outs to units where they moved the, the other things that went along with it and then it doesn't make any sense anymore except that it's in the exact same place. So obviously you just copied it, right? Don't do that. All right, your enemy. All right, you should have enemy unit icons for the teams, all right? You're a platoon, you're fighting an enemy squad, so you should be showing where are the fire teams within that squad and what are they doing, all right? Tactical task symbols, okay? Put the symbols down if they're trying to destroy, if they're trying to secure, if they're trying to um, seize, whatever they're doing, put the tactical task symbols there per fire team, all right? Every team having some kind of task that goes together to accomplish their overall mission. All right, you should then have a written task and purpose over out of the way. All right, you see it there on the side of this example. All right, for each team, okay, so you put down, you know, team A, and their decisive operation, task, secure, purpose, prevent us from crossing the bridge. All right, put those down for each team, what, what those tasks and purposes are. All right, that's coming from your assessment. All right, key weapon systems, okay, key weapon systems. If you get into doing all the rifles, you run the risk of having wrong numbers and, and not getting it all right, or, and it clutters it up. All we care about is key weapons, all right? Where are the machine guns, where are those rocket launchers, things like that, okay? Put them in a place, and they got to have an orientation to them, all right? It's, it shows where they're located exactly and what way they're pointed, all right? 
Make sure they're not pointed back into the enemy's rear, all right, with, with the back of the gun facing your avenue of approach or something, right? They, they need to be in a sensible location, a sensible orientation for accomplishing the mission, all right? And then range rings are optional, so you don't have to do that on the exam, all right? If you do put them, though, they need to be right, okay? So there's just a ring at the range of that weapon system centered on that weapon's icon, all right? Now, if you don't do a complete circle and you just do an arc in the direction of where the friendly is coming from, um, that's okay, especially maybe there's like a, a big cliffside or a mountain in the way and you want to make it a little bit simpler or, or it clutters up too much to do full circles. Uh, you can do that kind of thing, but again, they're optional, all right? And they should have some kind of label so I know which weapon system they go with. You can see an example here, there's a ring for an RPG, an RPK, and the PKMs. All right, <clears throat> you gotta have all your basic overlay info and this one should have a title that says it's the GTAO. All right, make sure that's included. Don't put any friendly unit icons on there. All right, don't put the objective on there or anything that goes on the AO overlay. All right, things that go on other overlays don't go on this one. This one just shows the enemy and the whole thing's in red. All right, the basic info is in black. All right, your friendly task orgs. All right, here is an example. Okay, make sure you're showing, all right, your unit is the one on top. You are a platoon leader. That top unit is a platoon. What platoon are you? All right, make sure you show your next layer subordinate units. All right, we go down one level. All right, you don't need to break it down any further. Okay, you just show who are the squads in your unit, or if you've got other attachments, there's a mortar section here, okay? All right, key weapon systems, all right? Make sure you show the right icon for the weapon system and the right number of them, all right? If they have two machine guns, you put the icon on there twice, all right? Just like, like this example here, all right? <clears throat> Any attachments, make sure they're included, all right? Now, if you've got, and in this example, there is an engineer team, and you've decided to task organize them under first squad and they report to the first squad leader. So you can show it that way. We also have an attached mortar section and we've got that shown here reporting directly to the platoon leader. All right, they're not inside of a squad. They report directly to the platoon leader and, and that's fine if it makes sense. All right, tasks and purpose. All right, see we've got a task and purpose. A platoon's task is seized and the purpose is to prevent the enemy free uh, Freedom Maneuver on Route Red, all right? Make sure you include the task and purpose on your task org. All right, enemy task org. This looks a lot the same, okay? A lot of those same requirements. You gotta show your enemy. Don't show the entire company's enemy. Don't show another platoon's enemy. Just your enemy is the only one that's on here, all right? And their subordinate units, we're breaking it down one level. So if your enemy is a squad that's on your objective, they're made up of fire teams, show the fire teams, all right? That's all you have to show. Key weapon systems, again, key, and show an icon for each one they have. If they have two missile systems, you show two icons, all right? Any attachments uh, should be included, all right? And make sure you get the right attachments. Read closely on the read ahead. That's why we give you lots of time. It's a read ahead, all right? To understand, make sure you fully understand uh, which attachments belong to your enemy, which attachments are on a different objective or belong to a different enemy. All right, and then a task and purpose should be on there, all right, uh, at least at the squad level that you've got that task and purpose given. All right, the area of operations of an area of interest, all right, is something you should understand the difference between. The area of operations is defined by the commander, and it's the area where you accomplish your mission, right? So the Company Commander's AO overlay will define your area of operations, all right? It's the place you have to work in. Area of interest is all that area where the enemy could jeopardize your mission, all right? That might be outside of your AO, all right? If there is a mortar, not in your AO, but in an adjacent platoon's AO, and that thing's got range on you, well, that's part of your area of interest, right? It's just not your AO. AO. All right, when you lay out your area of interest and you analyze it, you're looking for these three things, right? The close air support, the artillery, and the reserves, all right? And this comes right out of the battle book there. We can look at these different things that um, break those out, right? What are the capabilities? Where is it? When are they gonna trigger it? How long is it gonna take to get there, right? How much could they bring in to, to bear against you? All right, those are things you should consider when you're analyzing the area of interest. All right. 
light and weather. Make sure you know the five military aspects of weather. All right, wind, precipitation, cloud cover, temperature and humidity, and visibility. All right, <clears throat> you should just know those things. When you go to analyze them, make sure you're talking about a description of what, it, what the condition is, all right? What the effect is on you, what the effect is on the enemy, and that you're making some kind of deduction about so what? What does that mean for my mission? All right, and how is it gonna impact things? What do I have to do different as a platoon leader because of that? All right, key terrain. All right, know that, understand the definition of key terrain. Any locality or area, the seizure or retention of which affords a marked advantage to either combatant. All right, either combatant who holds that key terrain is gonna have the advantage. All right, when you, all right, you should be able to give a description and a deduction about the key terrain, all right? What is the key terrain? Why is it key terrain? And then what am I gonna do about it? Key point, you have to justify how it would benefit both the friendly and the enemy. Why does it give the friendly forces an advantage and why does it give, or what advantage does it give to the enemy? All right, both of those have to be addressed in your key terrain to say that it is key terrain. All right, the six warfighting functions. When you go to do your enemy capabilities analysis, you should know what all six warfighting functions are, all right, what they cover. And when you analyze them, you should be talking about a description of, of what is there, the capability that that brings, and, what it, you know, and then a deduction of what that means to you. What are you gonna do different because of that? Or what do you have to take into account and, and do? All right, now I wanna make sure everybody understands a point some people messed up on. All right, the fire's warfighting function is not every weapon system, all right? That is indirect fires is the, the fire's function, okay? That means artillery, that means long range rockets, air defense rockets, um, that means your mortar systems, right? Indirect fires that are coming in from somewhere else, okay? They don't move when they, when they shoot at different places, all right? Movement and maneuver all right, includes small arm weapon systems that maneuver forces carry with them. It also includes things that are mounted on maneuver vehicles, right? Like a tank gun. Those are not fires assets, those are maneuver assets, all right? They move, the weapon system moves around on the battlefield uh, at a fast pace and maneuvers, okay? So uh, rocket launch, you know, personnel held rocket launchers that they carry around like an AT-4, an RPG, your machine guns, all right, um, 203 grenade launchers, those are all part of the maneuver warfighting function. They are not part of fires. All right, civilians on the battlefield, all right, when you go have to analyze something about that, uh, you should know the acronym about A scope and what it stands for areas, structures, capabilities, organizations, people, and events. So you can talk about those kinds of things. All right, and the analysis, you should be looking to answer questions like how do the civilian considerations affect your operation? How do your operations affect the civilians? And how do our forces build better will uh, and relationships in our area of operations with the civilians? All right, so those are the kind of things you should talk about on your civilian analysis. All right, nesting of decisive operations is something we've been talking about. So here we've got an example of a battalion made up of companies made up of platoons, right? Uh, you as a platoon leader should be looking two levels up. So your higher analysis has to include the company commander and the battalion commander's levels. All right, the company commander is gonna include the battalion and the brigade. All right, now, if we have a battalion commander's task and purpose, all right, listed here, destroy the 87th Motorized Infantry Company, purpose, prevent enemy seizure of objective dog. All right, the battalion commander is gonna break that out to the three company commanders. All right, and in this case, Alpha Company has the decisive operation. All right, destroy 1st Platoon 87th MIC. All right, purpose, prevent the enemy seizure of objective dog. Now, you'll notice that Bravo Company and Charlie Company have shaping operations, right? They're gonna try and fix the second platoon. They're gonna try and block the third platoon while Alpha Company destroys, All right? The key thing here is that Alpha Company has a decisive operation, is the one that achieves the higher battalion's purpose, all right, and, and task, all right, the mission, all right. If Alpha Company succeeds, the battalion succeeds, all right. We've prevented the seizure of objective dog, all right, and we've met our task to destroy the company, all right. 
Same thing then flowing down as Alpha Company breaks that out. The platoon, all right, first platoon has tasks to destroy um, and purpose to prevent enemy seizure of objective dog, all right? So that's the thing that is achieving Alpha Company's mission, which means then that is what is achieving the battalion mission, all right? And you can see, you can also look at what these shaping operations are and how they just support the achievement of the uh, sister unit doing their thing. All right, mission statements. Make sure your mission statement answers the five W's. Who, what, where, when, and why. All right, the what needs to be a tactical task. All right, and the why needs to be a purpose. And they should be the same task and purpose that your company commander assigned to you. Okay, you know your unit. All right, date time group has to be nested with uh, hire. All right, you can't try and do your mission later than your company commander wants the company to be done and uh, the locations should come out of the company operations order. So there's not a lot of creativity here. We just pull this information from what the company commander gave us. All right, know all of your tactical task symbols. All right, study up on those because we might uh, give you, here's a symbol and you have to know what it stands for, not only the title, but then what's the definition that goes along with it. We might give you uh, the title and you have to create the, you know you're gonna have to create graphics that include these symbols. All right, and you're gonna have to put the right graphics there. So study up on those. Make sure you also understand the definitions and the differences between these. So if we just give you, um, you know, a, a description of what you're supposed to do, you can assign the right definition to it. All right, so that concludes our review. Uh, make sure you know all those things and um, you should be able to do really well on the WPR.